Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. We have something a little different from me today, but I hope to inspire the heck out of you with what I make. It all starts with this one mold. This is the Katie Sue brand. If you have seen my channel recently, you'll know that I fell hook, line and sinker in love with her molds. I saw this on her Instagram and I had to get it. I got it from Amazon. I will link it below. This is the compilation of roses by Katie Sue. Now, Katie Sue's molds are predominantly used for sugar craft, sugar paste, and fondant and cake making and all of those things. But of course, it is silicon, which means we can use it with anything we want. The biggest rose is three centimeters across, followed by the two centimeter rose, and then the tiny, teeny little ones are around the one centimeter, 1.2 centimeter mark. They are totally intricate and detailed and delicate and stunning and all of the words. Now it is the beginning of my spring, summer, floral, botanical season. And I thought, why just do one thing? Why don't we just do a whole compilation of things using the one mold? And we'll get so many ideas from this video. I really, really hope you love it. I have six different ideas in this video, but trust me, there are so many more and I'm gonna talk about them later on. First up, we have polymer clay. You guys know how much I am loving polymer clay right now. I bought this beautifully, it reminds me of the ballet slipper mica powder from Just For You Online, beautiful soft pink polymer clay. This is the Fimo Soft, got this from Hobbycraft and it is a stunning, perfect rose color. I put it through my pasta roller many, many times just to make it as soft as possible, enabling me to shove it down into this mold. Now, I'm guessing this is as close as you get if you were actually using the mold for fondant. If you were doing that sugar paste fondant rose for your cake designs, this is pretty much it. But we are using polymer clay, so they will be a lot more permanent than eating them, although the idea of eating them is quite excited as well. Of course, once you use it for anything other than food, do not go back and use it for food as it will no longer be safe to do so. Once I have truly, well and truly shoved the polymer clay down inside the mold, it is time to peel them out and oh my gosh, stop it. How stunning is this. This is exactly what drew me to this mold when I saw it on the Katie Sue Instagram. They came out perfect. And the beautiful thing is that polymer clay is such a solid material in itself. It was so easy to peel back out of the mold. And the reason for this video really it's not to get you to buy the mold. It's not so that you all click on my Amazon link and buy the mold, not at all. This is so that you can be inspired to use your molds in every which way possible. So think about the molds that you have at home that may have some real pretty detail in there, but you might not necessarily wanna do a certain thing. This video is for you. Once I have taken out all of my polymer clay roses, I baked them in the oven as per the instructions. However, the beauty with polymer clay is that it's an immediate response. So you could literally make a hundred in 30 minutes and put them in the oven and you've got a ton. Next up, we are going Eco. So I am using Jesmonite 100, AC 100. You could of course use any of your Eco pores. It would work with resin creep, aqua resin, H2O from Just View Online, all of the things. And I am using this stunning autumn color from Homeware Design Co. Here's the thing with Jesmonite and Eco. Jesmonite and Eco are fragile on the point of demold. And Jesmonite in particular is a really thick. Compare this with anything like resin crete, which is quite watery when you pour it, or plaster of Paris, even plaster of Paris or cement would work real well here too. But Jesmonite is super thick. So I did have to do this to the mold. I really wanted to make sure that my Jesmonite AC100 was getting down into all of those super detailed nooks and crannies. You wouldn't necessarily have to do that as much if you were using a watery, 
eco. I hope that makes sense. Of course, I've made way too much jasmine eye, most unlike me. So I did end up pouring it into one of my favorite pendant molds. And we're going to pair these with the jasmine eye roses later in the video. And you'll see, oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous. You'll see what I'm talking about. So I just used up all of my jasmine eye. Here's the thing. I left it in the mold for an hour and a half. Now, when we usually use eco, jasmine eye, anything like that, we usually say demold after 30 minutes to avoid it sweating in the mold. But I couldn't demold these after 30 minutes. The pendants, yes. But the roses, there was no way, no way on earth I was able to demold after 30 minutes. I would lose half of the rose. It is so fragile at the point of demold. I decided to leave it. One hour 30 and look at these. Now, this one here did break, but it's barely noticeable. You can see some here from those super fine detailed petals that some of them just didn't make it. So would I leave it in the mold overnight to really solid? Yeah, absolutely. Do it. Leave it in the mold overnight if you wish. And that will not happen. But again, it really didn't take away from the end result. And again, the best thing with Jasmine Eye is it's pretty much immediate. You pour it in, what, an hour, hour and a half later, you've got a stunning Jasmine Eye rose. And look at this. Oh my gosh, stop it. How gorgeous would this pendant be? You could use super glue and or a little blob of Jasmine Eye to stick your rose down onto your Jasmine Eye pendant. Equally, you could just have them as roses, use them as fridge magnets, any which way you want. Air dry clay is also an immediate effect, an immediate result, excluding drying time in the sense uh, with polymer clay. You can just shove it in and make as many as you can in the time that you have. So again, just molding your air dry clay, getting it so that it's nice and molded, being able to just shove it down into the mold, remove it in exactly the same way as polymer clay. The only difference I found with air dry clay is that when you take air dry clay out of the packet, it's quite wet. It's kind of like a bit wet and gloopy. So I did actually mold it between my hands. I rolled it between my hands for about 10 minutes, allowing it to just dry out a little bit more so that it was a little bit more solid. I hope that makes sense because when it came to demold, I was really worried that it would just be so sticky. It would just stick in there. And I definitely did not want that. This worked a dream. It was not as easy to remove from the mold as the polymer clay. However, just, you know, bending the mold back like this and just taking my time, you can see here, it's just not, it's not popping out like the polymer clay, but we got it all out in one piece. And how gorgeous is this? Again, you could use these as pendants, fridge magnets. You could make a polymer, uh, not polymer clay, you could make an air dry clay dish, attach your roses to the dish, you could make a little pot, attach them to the side of the pot with a bit of water, allow it all to dry together. And these are just delicate and stunning. It's the babies that melt my heart, the teeny, teeny little babies. And again, they would make absolutely perfect little stud earrings. And once they are dry, you can paint them any color you want. Next up, we're gonna try the polyurethane. Now, of course, you could go down the black roses route. How cool would black roses look, guys? The Gothic, oh my gosh, yes, please. Or you could use your white polyurethane. I am using the white polyurethane from Let's Resin because I have it, but I am gonna do something a little different with this one. Before I pour the polyurethane in, I am going to use my red alcohol ink just to dot the mold with alcohol ink. There's a huge risk here that you are going to stain the mold permanently, but I figured it was worth the risk. We're going to have a go anyway. Once that was in, I then poured the polyurethane down. And yeah, it's so simple. Now, if you are new to my channel and this is the first video you are watching, everything I use in this video has been used on my channel before. So go back and you'll see videos on polyurethane. You'll see videos on air dry clay, polymer clay, jasmine eye, and all of that jazz. But with the polyurethane, it is a super fast cure resin. 30 seconds, 30 seconds, mix time, demold after 10. So what you see me doing here is just using my micro brush to go down in, in and around that rose. I don't have to do that, but I just want to mix in the alcohol ink. The actual polyurethane did a great job of getting in all the nooks and crannies because it's practically water when you pour it. The pendant is nothing to write home about. In fact, it was hideous. However, oh my gosh, the roses, stop it. 
how gorgeous are these? They're like two-toned ombre, stunning, absolutely stunning. And again, you could use any color alcohol ink to do this. I love the way this one literally just has the tips of the petals being white. No alcohol staining in the mold. Are you serious? I was fully expecting to have half stained my mold at this point. There was a couple of spots there that I just got out with a cotton bud, but these came out beautifully again this is polyurethane so what you do next is entirely up to you you could make necklaces earrings key rings fridge magnets all of the things and or you could stick them onto your project if you are a 3d journaler or a junk modeler you could use these really really easily in your projects and the only thing that ever came to my mind when using these was like the halloween bottles you know the apothecary bottles you could stick them on oh my gosh stop this was a huge risk. Next up, silicon inlays. This was the biggest risk and I was confident, 100% confident I had the potential here to completely destroy the mold and it was a risk I was willing to take because I really wanted to try it. I am using the pink ballet slipper mica powder from Just View Online in with my silicon because it's a rose. I mean, roses do come in other colors, I know guys, but now silicon release spray. I'm gonna try silicon release spray in just the big rose. I'm not spraying the rest. I want to test it. I want to see the difference. Does it work across the board? So this big rose that I am pouring here right now has been sprayed with silicon release spray. If you've been with me a while, you'll already know I've done this before. I have made silicon inlays plenty times from Katie Sue molds and Finna Bear molds. They come out a dream. I've never had an issue. So I'm hopeful this is going to work. However, I've never poured silicon into a mold like this. All of these crunched up, delicate, detailed rose petals. I was a little bit petrified that it was a case of throwing this mold away afterwards. Now, if you've never used silicon, this is the Let's Resin two part silicon and it is measurable part A, part B, mixed together well for five minutes. You can add mica to color it. And I'm pouring from really high up off of my desk around two feet up. Now I did give this a bit of a squidge and a bit of a squish. I had leftover silicon, surprise, surprise. So I then took a mold of my glass cabochons, which you would have seen recently. And I did that in a cookie cutter just to give me some molds. And oh my gosh, I actually forgot to press record right at the beginning there. So I'm sorry you missed the beginning of that. But yeah, bend the mold back and forth. Use your thumb or your finger to just rub along the edges. It all comes away from the edge and it came out like a dream. Like a dream, I tell you. Why would we need silicon inlays of roses, Claire? Why not just make a resin rose and put it into your piece? I don't know. I mean, where's the fun in that? <laughs> Where's the fun? Where are the heart palpitations? Okay, we're gonna try it. We are going to try rose silicon inlays in resin. Stop it. I can't even imagine how beautiful that could potentially be, but also quite disastrous. But we will cross that bridge when we come to it. We shall see. We shall see. My plan is to use a pipette, get all of the resin down into all of those petals before flipping my rose upside down and laying it down into my mold. But how gorgeous are these? They came out. I can't believe they came out. Out. The point is, guys, if you've got a mold that you are absolutely in love with, you could do this too, but please use silicon at your own risk. Do not come back to me if you destroy your mold. The last, the last one, guys, you might think this is an unexpected one, but if you've been with me a while, you'll know I've done this before as well. Hot glue in silicon molds gives you pretty much what you would get if you were going to use resin. So if you are not a resin artist or a jesmonite artist or you don't have any polymer clay, guaranteed 99.9% .9 of crafters do have a hot glue gun at home. So grab your favorite mold, grab your hot glue gun. Uh, takes a lot of glue sticks. I think I went through about three glue sticks just for this one mold. Get the nozzle down in there, shove it right down in there and pull the trigger on the glue gun just so that you are getting that hot glue right deep down in. My other tip for the hot glue would be to let your hot glue gun turn it on and let it heat up like properly. I left my heat gun on for about 20 minutes before I went in to do this because it cools down so, so fast and 
I just think the hotter the better. So my advice here would be definitely turn your hot glue gun on, come back in 20 minutes, half an hour when it is piping hot and you'll get a lot more. You'll get a lot more glue coming out. This was around about 30 minutes later. You can already see rose number two was not actually full up. I couldn't see it myself, but guys, look at this. Absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous. We do have spillage and all of those hot glue cobwebs and spider webs all around the edges, which is fine. We can just trim them off with scissors. How would we use these? Oh guys, listen to me. There are so many possibilities. Again, if you're not resin or jesmonite artist, these could be used with anything. Earrings, come on, hot glue earrings. Who would know? Who would know? No one. But immediately my brain went to that journaling style, that 3D, that junk journaling, the Halloween bottles, the apothecary bottles, and sticking them onto the side like we do with the skulls. Again, this works with so many different molds. Once these are fully dry, you can paint them to whatever color you want. I'm just using some pink acrylic here because again, I like, I like these color roses. I'm not a fan of like the unnatural colors. You know, like when, you know, you can get like genetically modified flowers, like bright orange, in roses. Do you know what I mean, guys? I like pink roses. What can I say? Pink, white, and red. Anything else? I'm not a fan, but each to their own. Look at this color palette. Stop it now. This was not intentional. How gorgeous does that pink go with that autumn color? I cannot even cope with this color palette. I now want this in my house. Anyway, let's breathe. First up, we had the polyurethane. They came out a dream with that two-tone and the ombre. Then we had the air dry clay. Again, you could attach these to a bigger air dry clay project, a tray or a dish or anything else you decide to make. These came out gorgeous. I was most worried about these. I thought they were all going to get sticky and stick inside the mold, but look at them. They are so, so adorable. Next up, we had the jesmonite. Now, again, the jesmonite... I think really came through for me. I was so worried about this one. As if you've used Jesmonite or Eco, you will know that it is fragile on the point of demold. That is why we leave it in the mold a lot longer. So if you are gonna do Eco, I recommend with a mold like this, leaving it in for at least an hour and a half, even two, three, four hours. Don't worry about the sweat because it's all part of it, I guess. But I didn't get any marks. I didn't get any sweat marks at all. Again, glue them down to your bigger pieces or use them individually, however you see fit. Next up was the polymer. Now the polymer was probably the easiest thing to use. This is more of a every single person on the planet could use this and you could make hundreds in such a short space of time. That was the beauty of this one. If you've got a really big piece and you want a lot of roses, literally get your clay, shove it in, peel it out, shove it in, peel it out. Do that a hundred times, whack it all in the oven on a tile hundreds can be made in such a short space of time. Again, the silicon, I demolded this after 24 hours. So this was probably the longest project using this mold. I didn't even venture down the epoxy resin route because hello, we've all been there. We've done that. I've done that. And I didn't just want to stay the same, but the silicon inlays, I am obsessed with them guys. I, I just cannot believe how perfectly beautiful they came out of the mold. Of course, I had that leftover silicon, so I took a mold of some glass cabochons. Again, you could coat your silicon roses in resin, fill a little bit of your cabochon up with resin, flip your rose over, place it down into your cabochon mold, wait for the resin to cure, peel it out, do the whole chameleon powder, back it in black. Oh my gosh, stop it. The potential, the potential is there. I'm loving it. Last but not least is the hot glue. Now, again, back to the good old fashioned crafting, back to what Claire's Crafty Corner was six years ago when I first started. I was a hot glue gun crafter, one of my favorite things to do, all from one mold. And I didn't even touch epoxy resin. I asked my patrons what else we could do. They suggested your wax melts, even soaps or bath fizzes, anything like that. Let's not even forget the fact that they were designed initially for fondant and sugar crafting on your cakes possibilities guys are endless and again this is not just about this mold i'm not saying go spend money in my amazon storefront absolutely not this is about any mold that you have and what you could use it for and what you can actually cast inside that mold i am sure there's so much more we can do if i actually made soap i would try it if i made wax melts i would definitely try that too but i don't have any of that equipment and i don't know what i'm doing so this is what I know. Everything here. I'm just a bit obsessed with this color palette right now. 
this color palette was not intentional but this is like a pinterest worthy photo <laughs> I hope you feel inspired because trust me when I say this is probably one of the most fun videos I've done in so so long because I wasn't actually intentionally setting out to create something massive I'm not here making trays or coasters or anything like that this was just all experimental and seeing what we could get out of one mold using pretty much every medium available to every crafter on the market in the world hope you've enjoyed i hope you feel inspired if you have please send it on to your friends because that would really help me out and do not forget to hit that thumbs up give me that like which i rarely ask for i really should ask at the beginning for you guys to do that i always forget if you've been with me in the live chat thank you so much because this has been a long one we are coming up to 21 minutes so if you are still here do give me a little bit of a emoji heart in the comment section and let me know that you stayed all the way through and that you stayed to the end and I will love you forever. Thank you all so, so much for spending this time with me. I will see you in the next video. Bye.